Three lessons from a stupid man, because you can learn from stupidity. So welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. Now, yesterday, we discovered that David sent some men to Nabal to ask for some generosity, and Nabal rejected and insulted David and his men. Today, David and 400 men are coming to confront Nabal. <laughs> so let's see what happens in verses 14 down through 22. But one of the young men told Abigail, so this is a young man of Nabal's house. One of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to greet our master, and he railed at them. Yet the men were very good to us, and we suffered no harm, and we did not miss anything when we were in the fields as long as we went with them. They were a wall, a wall to us both night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know this and consider what you should do. What you should do for harm is determined against our master and against all his house. And he is such a worthless man, a worthless man that one cannot speak to him. <laughs> Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep already prepared and five sails of parched grain and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on donkeys. And she said to her young men, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal. And as she rode on the donkey and came down under cover of the mountain, behold, David and his men came down toward her, and she met them. Now David said, Surely in vain I have guarded all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him. And he has returned me evil for good. God, do so to the enemies of David, referring to himself in the third person. <laughs> and more also, if by morning I leave so much as one male, and the term one male here is actually a, a vulgar term. It means to, it means one who stands and pisses on the wall. <laughs> so you might imagine what he's saying. Of all who belong to him. So there's a lot here in the text today. So let me make three observations and subsequent points. First, one of Nabal's servants clarifies that David is a shepherd of shepherds. This young man of Nabal's house makes numerous flattering comments that David and his men were very good to them, that they suffered no harm, that they did not miss a thing, that they were a wall to us and our flock. So we learn that his first career, David's first career as a shepherd, had a principal impact on his second career as a leader of men. So first lesson, never take for granted what God might be preparing for you in one part of your life for the next part of your life. David was the youngest in the family, and while shepherding might have seemed like a meaningless job in the hills of Bethlehem, clearly God used it to prepare David for a career of leadership and protection over the hills of Israel and the people of Israel. You know, sometimes what appears to be drudgery in your life at the moment might be a divine preparation for some time later in life. So if you feel like your present job is a li little drudgery, pay less attention to the drudgery today and more attention to the divine lessons that God is trying to teach you. Second, it's evident that everyone in Nabal's family and on his staff knows he's a worthless and reckless and resistant man to feedback. <laughs> the picture painted of Nabal is now complete. He is more than a fool. He is rich and resistant to feedback, which makes him an entitled fool. An entitled fool. You know, no one is more stubborn than a leader, husband, or father who is relatively skilled, rich, and resistant to feedback. But resisting all feedback from people, especially godly people, is foolish. Resistance does things like stunt our growth, damages relationships, and stalls out our spiritual maturity. When we go too far, it might lead to isolation and getting us fired, or in Nabal's case, getting him killed. <laughs> so don't be an entitled fool today. Pay attention to feedback from a friend or a family member or a colleague. It might be just the feedback that you need 
It actually is coming from the Father above. Third, a savior is inserted into the story. It's a, a noble wife and a brave woman, and her name is Abigail. Now, there's a lot to love about this woman, <laughs> but notice the similarity between Saul and Jonathan and now Nabal and Abigail to David. Did you catch it here? It's, it, the Saul and Jonathan relationship seemed to be replicated between Nabal and Abigail. David is about to find another ally in the house of an adversary. Like Jonathan had been to David, Abigail is about to be to David as well. And they are about to become very close. <laughs> now, you need allies in this life. You do. Godly men and women to give you direction. Sometimes you stumble upon them, and other times you're going to have to work and find them. Regardless, build alliances with godly believers in this life. They are a source of substance and sanity when stupid people do stupid things. <laughs> and they might steer you away from becoming stupid yourself. <laughs> I love you guys. Pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.